Are we just posting the posts because we're supposed to? Are we like, what's the point? And what are we building towards? And what's the strategy to bring the right kind of people to the door so that we don't have to just, we're not wasting our time with crap leads. We're more qualified leads who are better customers who turn out to be better referrals, you know, like, and so I think there is a distinction between doing and doers versus a leader that you can trust and give the strategy over to. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Orthopreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Krieger. Today, I'm going to make you a little uncomfortable. I think me and my guest are going to make you a little uncomfortable because we all struggle with marketing, uh, leadership, management of marketing. And um, I'm bringing somebody in from outside orthodontics who knows way more about marketing than any of us. And she's going to offer some great insights and things you should start thinking about. And so uh, Veronica Romney, founder of the Rainmaker Residency, uh, of which I have actually used. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Hi, Glenn. How, it's really fun to be here on your podcast. This is fun. Yeah. She has a podcast of her own. Yeah. And, so, um, <laughs> and we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, one of the biggest challenges we face in orthodontics mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm, I'm going to step back for just a second. I did a poll not long ago in mm -hmm. my group, and I've done it in two separate groups now. And I asked, you can have one or the other. You can make more money or you can have lower stress in 2024, mm -hmm. which would you prefer? Now, conversations we always have about our money, 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 growth, production, management, all that stuff. Overwhelmingly, the lowest percentage we had was 73% saying lower stress, 27% saying more money. In another group, it was almost 95% lower stress and 5% um, more money. So it's oh. crystal clear that yeah. we live in an era where orthodontists, at least, are mm -hmm. finding themselves stressed out, not overstressed necessarily, but stressed out, where they love to reduce it. And I've been an advocate of outsourcing. Yeah. Outsource, outsource, outsource. Because when we look from within, we often end up with problems. I'm really looking forward to talking with you today because what you do is outsourcing. It's, mm -hmm. it's insourcing mm -hmm. through outsourcing. Did mm -hmm. I say that right? Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, I do agree, actually. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and one of the hardest things that we do as orthodontists is focus on the growth of our practices because unless you're just a weirdo like me who lives for marketing, lives for understanding what makes people buy and, and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. most orthodontists don't want to put that hat on. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they're going to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to hire somebody, they don't have a clue what they're hiring. Sure. Right? I've heard people say, for marketing, let's hire you know, a local high schooler who's really into social media, right? I'm sure you've heard that one. Yeah, the cousin in the, in the basement with the boxers who does your social media. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, or, hey, my friend's wife just got yep. laid off from this really big company. She's yep. looking for a job. She's willing to do this part-time. I've heard that mm -hmm. one, right? Mm -hmm. Or or so-and-so used to work with a marketer. Mm -hmm. It all, it, at the end of the day, most of it is garbage. And so we're going to have some conversations mm -hmm. today about really what they should be considering. And so sure. le let's start, if you want to give everybody a little bit of background of who you are, what is yeah. Rainmaker Residency, uh, where your background is, and how you kind of ended up where you are now. Let's start with a personal little note. I had braces from third grade to eighth grade, two sets of braces, headgear I had to wear to school. I had the, the spacer on the roof of my mouth. I had to get cranked every night. I mean, I've had the rubber bands I thought were cute because they would, they would match the holidays. <laughs> like I was like the definition of an ugly ugly duckling growing up, had really poor self-esteem. I and wildly by the way, over- for the record, yeah. it looks like we did a pretty good job. <laughs> I mean, Take if you were you. the ugly duckling growing up, yeah. you, you worked out just fine here. And I want to make a note um, to anybody looking at her on the on, on this video, mm -hmm. it is crystal clear it's only because of the braces. Oh, if, yeah. <laughs> but, but for the orthodontist, mm -hmm. who knows what you would have looked like, right? No, but seriously, thank you for no. your contribution to our profession. Yeah. <laughs> you can thank my parents <laughs> for their years of contributions to your profession. Um, I had I, my front tooth was on top of the other tooth. It was that bad. It was that crowded. So I'm very grateful. Do you want to give a um, shout out to your orthodontist in case they happen to be listening or are they dead? Uh, no, I don't think they're dead. <laughs> I actually don't even know. I don't remember. I was so little. I don't remember his name in Boca Raton. I'll have to, I'll have to get back to you so we can give him a shout out and put a link yeah, in the sure. show notes. <clears throat> but I know your, your space very intimately. And I also know marketing very, very well. I've been a marketer for like 15 plus years. 
I've known it from memory angle. You can imagine I was a corporate marketer working for some very big companies that are now worth $2 billion in valuation. Wow. I have also had my own marketing agency where I would render uh, local marketing services for doctors, for uh, brick and mortars, for the mom pa shops or the family run businesses. Um, and so I have, I've never cheated on my boyfriend marketing. We've been in a long relationship, long-term relationship. My husband's fully aware, but I, after 15 years of this craft in executing services and helping people make money and helping people find the right staff where I've come to like this pinnacle in my career is I made myself. And so where a lot of companies suffer is they don't have a proper marketer to gift wrap their company, gift wrap the services they render and the products they offer. And it's very difficult to do that for yourself because you are the product more, more times than not. And it's, it's impossible yeah. to be objective with yourself. Yeah. And so having that external person, that expert to do that for you is what I call a rainmaker. And so now I'm in the business of making more rainmakers because I can't be a personal rainmaker for everybody that asks me. And so now I train marketers to be rainmakers for organizations. And that's that's really been like the biggest gift of my career so far. That's awesome. And, mm -hmm. and more specifically, just so that nobody misses out and, and truly what you do, if you're a company and you say, look, I need a marketing edge and, and, and <laughs> you have the humility and the vulnerability to say, I'm not the one to do it, yep. right? I, I I need to get that marketing edge and I am not a genius marketer. I am right. not up to date on all the aspects that make a marketer good, yeah. right? All the, all the things we would put on the checklist of hiring somebody, they come to you and you help mm -hmm. pair them with somebody that then you yeah. will actually train Correct. through a residency. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, you need somebody cool, we'll do it for you. We're a marketing agency because that's not what you are. You will say, oh, here's three people I've, I've narrowed it down to who've applied to us who I think could be good. Let's talk. Find one. Great. You hire them. Wonderful. Now they're going to go through the residency as well. So it really is A to Z. Did I get that right? No, and you're right because, number one, um, marketers are the most turned out professionals in the industry. They left unaided, they will last six to eight months on average, which is really, really low when you contrast that to other professionals in the executive suite. Um, so I'm not interested in contributing to the churn and burn of the industry when it comes to my beautiful marketers. Um, also, they need support. So marketing is both art and science. Marketing is creativity, but it is execution. And so we don't want to just place them within the walls of the, your organization. And then they have nobody to bounce ideas with. They have nobody to brainstorm with. They have no support because nobody else in the office, nobody else in the organization is a marketer. And so we want to provide that leadership development. We want to provide that community. And I also, in, in, in the scope of my programs, I also come in as that rainmaker and give strategic counsel to the company as well. Uh, and we do that over the course of several months. So yes, it is one of the things I, I will match make you with marketers who I think would be perfect for your organization, but I'm, I'm interested in their long-term success, not just immediate placement. Oh, it's brilliant what you do. And it's such a service. Um, little side note, little story. We were sitting with our EOS implementer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Love and, EOS. You know, we have an EOS implementer uh, for entrepreneurs, right? We meet quarterly. We go through things with him and we sort of identified what is you know, what are in Glenn's goals for the next 90 days, right? Anybody out there listening who, who runs EOS knows you have 90 day rocks yep. that you have to develop. And one yep. of my rocks was finding someone to help market, right? There'd be a lot of offerings and entrepreneurs. And quite honestly, I don't have the time to start running SEO campaigns and worrying AB testing and everything else that goes along with it. That by the way, everybody out there should be thinking about for their orthodontic practices. Yep. Um, and so I said, I think I could find somebody in the next 90 days. And I started looking. I went on Indeed and I approached it. <laughs> I know, try not to laugh. I already know much. where the ending is. <laughs> well, the ending is I ended up hiring Rainmaker yeah. Residency, right? That's yeah. the ending. Mm -hmm. And we ended up getting an amazing marketing person uh, through you who's yeah. just remarkable, like remarkable. Um, but, you know, you go on to Indeed mm -hmm. and there are literally hundreds of people mm -hmm. who, quote unquote, match your criteria. Mm -hmm. And you start looking through it and you say, good, I'll, I'll get a hundred and I'll narrow it down to, to 10. And from those 10, I'll narrow it down to three sure. and then I'll interview them. And even that was too much for me. I had my virtual assistant, sort of one of my VAs start doing all of that. 
And when you get down to the last three, you look and like none of them really do what you need them to do, right? And and again, I don't remember if it was you that I had the conversation with, but I think it's worth talking about. Sure. Did we talk about the different titles that apply to marketers so that you can better if you're if someone is not going to use Rainmaker Residency, mm-hmm. and I tell everybody, proceed mm-hmm. at your own peril. I'm oh, just yeah. saying that now. There is an organizational hierarchy mm-hmm. to the titles applied to marketers. Mm-hmm. And if you put the wrong title or hire the wrong title, you are not even going to get close to what you want, which I think you had that conversation with me. Do you mind running through that real quickly? I talk a lot about title inflation, um, that there are unfortunately a lot of professionals who are given inflated titles that are not exactly equivalent to their experience. So you know, chief of marketing, who, what I look at the resume, like who calls us like this, is not a chief marketing officer or VP of marketing. So unfortunately, a lot of people will self appoint their own titles, or they'll work, they'll work for small businesses that give them very hefty titles. And then it's just not really reflective of their skill. Um, and I, I also very much talk about the differences between, you know, hiring a doer of marketing versus a leader of marketing. And I think Absolutely. that is a very strong distinction that, that I think we should also talk about because if you want something done, then you're going to want marketing execution, marketing doing, somebody to execute your social media posts, somebody to write your SEO articles to post on the website on your blog or to, to write the newsletter that goes out to your, you know, your email list once a week or once a month. Like there's execution, But doers don't give themselves their own deadlines. That's an oxymoron type of situation. You would never say, oh, set your own deadlines, writer. You know, like that doesn't work, right? And so a doer, it's not fair to them if you expect them to self-manage. And so I love my rock star doers, but they cannot be left to their own. They need a parental leadership position to manage them. So sometimes I work with these owners and they get these, you know, beautiful virtual assistants on Upwork or Fiverr or, or you know, the cousin or the extent, like what we talked about. Like, I know, I know a guy, like it's, yeah. you know, I, you know, I know a guy. I know somebody. Uh, yeah. Um, and they bring all these doers to the party and they're really excited because, oh, I'm going to let, let this go. Somebody else can deal with it. But these doers still need managerial oversight. And so that's where you have a, a, a marketing leader who is more kind of that conductor of the marketing orchestra. Like they're the ones that are going to set the deadlines. They're going to hold people accountable. They're going to be in, you know, responsible for the strategy. Like what's the plan here? <laughs> like, are we just posting to post because we're supposed to? Are we like, what's the point and what are we building towards and what's the strategy to bring the right kind of people to the door so that we don't have to just, we're not wasting our time with crap leads. We're more qualified leads who are better customers who turn out to be better referrals, you know, like, and so I think there is a distinction between doing and doers versus a leader that you can trust and give the strategy over to. That's great. Well said. And and am I incorrect in believing that when you look at a resume, the title is going to tell you not just if they're, you know, they have title inflation. That's one mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. But if someone really sees themselves as a VP of marketing, that's not a doer. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Right. If somebody no. says, oh, dude, I can get somebody. She was a VP of marketing at a Fortune 500 company and she's willing to come work for us for I can afford her. She's the wrong person if you're looking for a doer. Right. Well, the, I mean, truthfully, a leader, I, my rule, my recipe of success when it comes to marketing leaders is a 2080 split. So 20% is still doing because I don't want them to lose their edge on the craft. Like I don't want them to not know enough about running ads where they're going to get BSed by an ads doer. You know what I mean? Right. So I still want them to have an edge. But 80% of their time is leading strategic oversight, people management, like it is not execution. And so, yeah, if depending on what stage your business is at, I would never run off to get a leader that you're going to overpay when really you just need hands to do unless you are a terrible manager and you know it and you're humble enough to say, I'm not a good manager, right? So like, and that's why like when I meet with, with, you know, with the Glens, like when I meet with you the very first time, I'm going to ask a lot of probing questions to see like, what do you really need? Because nine times out of 10, I, you come into the conversation thinking you need X. And I know through my experience, you actually need Y. 
You, know? you did that exact with mm-hmm. me. I was about to pull the trigger on mm-hmm. making a huge mistake. Expensive. Because the, yeah. yeah, I saw the title and their background and all the campaigns they'd run and all the things they'd done right. And I said, hey, I think this someone's and you're like, this is the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> like why? Love them, but like can't. why? Look at like yeah. I, I've narrowed them down from a hundred yeah. people. Look at like because yeah. and and maybe you, this is the right person down the road sure. when you have a couple of doers. Right. Yeah. And now you need yeah. someone to manage your marketing department, yeah. but this is the wrong. So you saved me from a huge mistake and got me somebody amazing. And so, so let's, let's put the shoes on the orthodontist, okay. right? Let's do There's it. an orthodontist listening right now yeah. uh, who is got a good practice, right? They're, they're, uh, they're doing all sorts of social media, right? The big things in orthodontics are AdWords, right? Doing some sort of Google AdWords, some sort of social media content. If you're not on social media, you don't exist, Right. Um, and that includes Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Although I, I want to just take my quick two-second sidestep here and get your opinion. I see massive amounts of TikTok engagement being yearned for by so many orthodontists mm-hmm. because it's cool, mm-hmm. it's trendy, but the demographic they're going after that's liking their posts are not people who are ever going to come into their practice. Do you? I, I know your answer is going to probably be you need to balance everything, right? You need, you need to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But do you ever feel like businesses today are spending way too, by the way, brick and mortar businesses. I'm not talking about online where people can order from anywhere for a product that, right? A squatty potty, right? Like anybody can order a squatty potty. Doesn't matter. Do all the TikTok you want because someone in Timbuktu is going to buy it. But a brick and mortar facility where my radius is five to 10 miles, do you feel like people are spending way too much time on on TikTok, which is not really that targeted, so to speak, because they're creating so much content for these things. Yeah. And, and by the way, social media is a monster that requires to be fed and it is extremely time consuming. And so like if you have a <laughs> finite amount of time and resources and capacity to dedicate to marketing at all, why would you overstep $10 to touch a penny? Exactly. And so for me, it's more like a priority that would be very important. You'd want the discipline to make sure, okay, if I don't have like my, like if I don't even have a pin on the map and I don't have my reviews in place and my listings in place, like if I don't have the fundamentals done first, you don't have any business trying to go viral on TikTok. First of all, those kids aren't going to pay you. Their parents are paying you. They're not looking at TikTok. So like, so I think you have to just... But at the same time, I know there's these crazy success stories of the chiropractor that blows up on social media and he's cracking everybody. And next thing you know, he has celebrities and there are people are flying into his office yeah. in San Diego, Miami, California. Dr. Yeah. Miami is a great example, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of, of somebody who blew up, but back on the days of Instagram, like yeah. he was, he started with Instagram and I, I can't stand watching him. He's crazy. <laughs> right? But yeah, yeah. And the Dr. Your- Pimple Poppers. I mean, there's lots of examples of people that have used social media successfully and then, uh, you know, brokered a deal on TV and all this stuff. But those are, I mean, they're the the statistical outliers. Like to right. me, if you don't have the discipline to have the fundamentals, like, yeah, if you don't have a website, we have a problem. If you don't have at least a, a little bit of social presence, it's like you got to, people have to know that you're open for business. Right. They have to find you. They have to be able to navigate to you. Like, let's start with that before we add, you know, the cherry and the whipped cream on top of marketing efforts for sure. And if you don't have a, a really codified written down policy for how you're getting Google reviews, Yelp reviews, oh, well, I'm not a big 100%. Yelp fan, but, but yeah. again, if you're, if you're getting Google reviews one a month, yeah. One every two months. Yeah. Like to me, that is the place you dive in right away is. Yeah. You know, that was a big thing. So I, people don't know this. My parents uh, were HVAC contractors for 33 years in Boca Raton, Florida. Cuban and, immigrants. And yep. Cuban immigrants that came here with nothing, sold their business for millions of dollars. Like the definition of the American dreams. I mean, big reason why, who I, who I am as, as the eldest got front row witness to it. Right. Um, but when, <laughs> when I finished with that call, marketing college degree and had some years under my belt, um, definitely got called upon like, Oh, Veronica's going to do our marketing. Of course, Veto's going to do your marketing. And literally one of the number one immediate marketing strategies was reviews big time fast. 
And so like we did a whole program within the company to make sure to like incentivize the team to ask for the reviews and like if their name gets dropped in a review and all of this stuff. And like within a couple of months, we had hundreds of reviews and then people would call the office like, I saw your reviews. I'm like, I'm, I'm sure you did. So like, yeah. yeah, reviews is huge. So so going back now, our orthodontist is doing tons of social media. I, that's where I took my... I, my digression. So <laughs> they're they're doing tons of social media, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and their practice is doing okay, but they're like, I really want to become the man or the woman in the region. So I'm going to hire this person and bring them in. So I find the let's assume I find the right doer. I find the right doer, but I don't know the first thing about really managing social media. How do they get managed effectively? Okay, well, there's two things that you just actually said in that in that pre frame that I'm hearing. There's there's the specific strategy or tactic that is social media. But what you are also saying is like, how does somebody differentiate themselves? Because to be known as the guy or the girl, right? To be known as like, my husband got his LASIK done by the doctor that did the LASIK for the rock. Like, so it's like, right. And he does all of the pant, the, the hockey players, the Miami Heat players, like it's the man, the guy, right? Um, how do you become that? How do you, how does one LASIK surgeon differentiate from the other surgeons? How does one orthodontist differentiate from other orthodontists when you're literally in the same building or across the street from each other? And so like, even before I have a doer do anything, I want to make sure that I have clarity on like what our unique differentiator is. Like, who are we to people that it feels unlike anyone else? Like there has to be a level of conversation of who we are in someone's life, who, what problems we're solving for them, the manner in which we do it. That's a little bit different than the person across the street from us. Like these are things that like as a strategic marketing expert, we want to extract. And then once we're extracting that, then I'm like, okay, social media crew or team of one, these are the specific things I want to highlight in our messaging when we do social media, so it's banking in the right brand credit than just doing social media for the hell of it, right? I don't want which, I, which that's a lot of people not, are doing. Yeah, and I it's because they're checking something off a list. Hey, it's, and it's trending it, now. It, this is trending, right? You hear how often do you hear that from an assistant or somebody in the office? Yeah. Hey, Doctor Krieger, dress up like a chicken and bark like a dog. Why am I dressing up like a chicken and barking? Start down the it's, hallway because it, it's trending. Yeah. Well, who's it trending on? 11 year olds yeah. a, like I don't know anything trending among moms yeah. <laughs> like yeah. except for maybe a Stanley thermos yeah like you know uh, but but you're right you're 100 percent so my going going back to my question I've differentiated myself let's cr- let's pretend I'm a little more savvy than the average orthodontist and I've created a unique selling mechanism in my practice right you can go to any orthodontist and get braces or you can come to Krieger orthodontics and get smile design right? I'm just, mm-hmm. you know where I'm going love with this. It, yes. I like the smile on your face when I say yes, that, by the way. Love it. Well, yeah, because it's a unique selling proposition. It right? feels and, and exciting. I, here's the here's the sad part. I had Todd Brown, uh, if you know Todd at all, um, I had him speak at a summit. And I'd say 99% of the people there thought he bombed, didn't understand what he was talking about, didn't think he was amazing. And he was giving pure gold, Yeah, right? But the, because- it's, yeah. The sales funnel, the uh, the hierarchy of problem oriented, solution oriented, right? It's all it's it's stuff that most orthodontists don't want to hear. But I I encourage everybody to have a unique selling mechanism. It doesn't mean to lie. People mistake that think you're lying. But if what you do is different, if you genuinely believe that what you do is different, like if I say what makes you better, why should I come to you instead of the person across the street? First of all, you don't have an answer. That's a problem. Right. If you say, well, I guess they're really good too. You could go to them. Like, okay, maybe you should be an associate. Maybe you shouldn't be owning your own practice. But if you know what makes you different, you need to create a phrase, a term, a word to describe your mechanism, which is, well, um, we just love people so much more. Great. You love people so much. You love on them so much more. Great. So now create with our love, touch, smile design, whatever mm-hmm. you come up with, mm-hmm. you will feel cared for more mm-hmm. than any other orthodontic practice in your life. And for those people where that matters, they'll come to you. Um, but people don't realize they hear it on every commercial on TV now using our blank technology. That word didn't exist until they created it. But but now the two mattresses, 
One is blank technology. The other is just a mattress. So which one are you going to choose? And so let's say I don't have that wherewithal and I got my doer. How do I manage them effectively? I, I don't, because I can see a lot of failure there. If I don't really know marketing and I'm not using Rainmaker Residency, which does solve a lot of the problems. If I'm an orthodontist out there listening right now and I just hired somebody who really is a doer and knows what they're doing, how do I manage them effectively? Well, okay. So first things first, anytime that you have a doer on the scene doing anything, it could be any task, you want to set them up for success. But fundamentally, you have to define what success is. I think because social media or SEO copywriting or, you know, anything like insert any marketing technique, right? I think because those things are not part of your basic training as a doctor, I, like I get it. It's, you went to school to be an orthodontist. You didn't go to school to be a marketer. Um, but I think, I do think a lot of doctors are guilty of dumping and running. So they hire somebody, they say, you do my social media, which is like dumping the responsibility. And then they take off and they like go do the rest of their job. And then this person's kind of left in a, in a boat without a paddle. So like the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to define what success is. Like what does, what does social media success look like or what would be great for this person? Cause this person's going to want an, a goal to achieve, to feel good about their contribution. Like we want to win. People want to do well. They want to, you know, get an A on the test. And it's very difficult to win a board game when you don't know the rules of the game. And so if I have a social media manager, like on a basic level, I'm like, okay, basic, I want you posting at least once a day. What would be great is if we had a growth of like, let's say a hundred new followers a month, that would be fantastic. But more importantly, I want to make sure that they're saving the content, they're sharing the content, they're engaging with the content. And so like, how can we create content that's inviting them to a conversation? Should we always sign off with our content? So they're like inviting, you know, comment below, da, 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 da. Like, should we do a giveaway? Like what is in this person's jurisdiction? What decision-making authority does this person have to be creative? Like, these are all things that you want to give a doer. Like the doer has deadlines. The doer has success criteria. The doer has the fundamentals written down on their job description. But what does a doer have in their proactive decision-making authority that doesn't have to be passed off by you. Like those are all the things that I would be having a conversation with, with any doer that I would ever hire in any capacity. It's, it's all so much truth here. And um, it's the stuff that we overlook as yeah. business owners. We see a position, we fill a position, we move on to the next position because we're working short staffed. Yeah. So good. You've been hired. We're going to have a conversation. Maybe we'll go to lunch. Yeah. We'll talk about it. And then just report so, yeah. to me every week. Yeah. Give me any problems you got. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, I got to go get another assistant because yeah. I'm down an assistant. And we got to hire that one. And honestly, I don't want to be doing this anyway. So I'm only doing a favor of my treatment coordinator who's overburdened. So really good to have you as a part of the team. You're going to love working here. Bye. And two months later, why are we not growing? What are we doing? And I've seen it. I've been there. Um, but now let's shift it over to Rainmaker Residency. Right. So I reach out to you, uh, by the way. Uh, how do people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? Oh, you, veronicaromney.com. There you go. <laughs> Very Veronica simple. Veronicaromney.com. Yeah. <laughs> so they reach out to you um, mm -hmm. and you interview them, right? I assume that's the first step is an interview like you did with me. And then you identify what they really need. Yeah, there's two ways that I come in. So either I'm I'm walking into a conversation like what we had, which is like I've already done the work to know that I need to hire out a weakness that I don't currently possess or I don't have the capacity to do. Like as even though I love marketing and I get like all riled up when I hear marketing strategies from stage, like I don't personally have the capacity to do this. I need somebody else that can compliment. I have ideas. Usually like a business owner will come to me like I am flooded with ideas. I get ideas when I take a shower. I get ideas ideas when I take a walk, you know, walk the dog. I get ideas when I listen to a podcast, I read a book. Like a lot of my CEOs, my beautiful visionary CEOs have lots of dreams and ideation. And they're usually super frustrated because they don't have a team to execute it quickly or at all. So you, you already came to me with like, I know what I want. I know I have these ideas and I'm not the one to do it. So like, what's the crew? What's the team structure to get this done? Cool. Other times I have CEOs that come to me and they're like, I know I need a who, but I don't know what they're going to be doing and how that fits into my overall growth 
strategy for my business. So they'll work with me first, even like if it's just like an hour, like a, like an, a consultative hour to lay out the strategy for the year or the strategy for marketing or the strategy for whatever. And then we go through the process of putting the right people in the right seats to do the right things that fulfill and get that strategy across the table, right? So it depends on where on where somebody is starting, if they already have a pre-existing strategy or they do not, but I can provide both. So we have a call. You've identified what I need. Mm-hmm. And now you have a gr- vetted Mm-hmm. you know, people that you can fit into that position for mm-hmm. me. So then I interview them and I, mm-hmm. some guidance from you, I come up with the person who I really want at that point. And then I say to you, Hey, Veronica, I want to hire blank. What happens next? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So normally b- because of the nature of what I do and my content and my social media, I have marketers that come to me quite often saying, I don't love my job. I'm looking for a new opportunity. Do you know some, but so like either they're coming to me and I just have them kind of in like my black book of like bad ace marketers, or they're coming to me in another side of the program, which is the marketer only side and I'm developing them. So I, I'm, fl- I sit with, a, I got a whole bunch of marketers at my disposal And so when a business owner comes to me and says, I'm needing marketing support, yeah, I'm going to meet with them and I'm going to figure out, number one, are you a great business owner? Because I'm not going to put just anybody in in your nest. I got to make sure, I got to make sure that I'm I'm matching a good person with a good person. That's very important to me. I don't, and so um, I'm going to meet with this person. I'm going to scope out what they really need. Cause again, usually they think it's an X, it's really a Y. And then I'm like, okay, these are the three people like right from the top that I think would actually be a great fit for you take a look, talk to them if you want to. And then I usually come back in to do the final interview. Um, The reason that I'm going to come in and do a final interview, even though I'm the one that recommended them in the first place is because when business owners interview, they interview with what I call happy ears. They hear what they want to hear. Oh my God, that's so true. They hear what they want to hear, not what's actually being said because they want to fill the position. And then what my business owners are also lovingly, unintentionally guilty of is we also vision cast for a person. So we don't just vision cast for our business and our families, but like we will vision cast. So like, even though this person's coming to you with like three skills, you're like, but they could have seven skills and they could do this. And then they could do this. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're hiring for this immediate position, this immediate need chill out. (laughs) Take a a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I appreciate that you're thinking about how this person can like climb Everest for you, but we don't even know if they can do the bunny hill. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. So like a lot of business owners will hire and do an interview with happy ears and like an empty stomach. And so I'm going to come in and I'm, I tend to ask way more probing questions. I ask the uncomfortable questions. I don't take the first answer as the real answer. I dive, like I go through a whole process to make sure that this is really the best match. And more importantly, does this person have the stamina, the backbone to be a marketer? Because marketers are expected to make it rain. And if you can't handle the heat of the arena, then you have no business being in the marketing industry. And so like, even if somebody has been in the game for a while, it doesn't mean they're not burned out and they're not fatigued and they can't go the distance with somebody. So I'm going to ask a lot more questions and I don't have happy ears because I'm not hiring it for me. I'm not emotionally connected to this. Nice. Yeah. So no, it all makes sense. I sound like so, an investigator. <laughs> no, no, it just could it, cop it, back up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounded funny. So now we got the person, yeah. right? We have identified them. Yeah. I've hired them. Yeah, we're How does the Rainmaker now. residency itself work? What happens? Yeah. So then I hold and, you. And yes. I'm mad because I know the answer. Yeah. I've hired them. What role do I play in all of this as well? Yeah. So we want to make sure that everybody's sitting in the right seat, doing the right things. And lovingly, I got to show my business owners how to not dump and run, be a great leader, but also get out of the way. And I have to teach these new marketers that I affectionately call rainmakers because we make it rain to receive the responsibilities of their bosses, which if you don't think that's intimidating to literally step into the shoes that your CEO and your business owner once held themselves, it is. And so they have self-confidence issues. They have imposter syndrome, even if they're 15 year vets, like it's, it is chronic about 85% of marketing professionals have imposter syndromes, even at the highest levels. And so I have to teach one of you how to let go. And I have to teach one of you how to receive. And I have to teach each of you how to 
step into your truest job descriptions, one being a founder and owner, one being a leader responsible for the doers, right? And so like I basically am coaching two people, this dynamic relationship side by side with both of you. And so oh. they're going through weekly calls. Are yeah. They going yeah, we have weekly calls, we have curriculum, we have coaching calls, we have one-on-one -on -one opportunities for laser coaching specific to the problems at hand. We have both in uh, personal development and professional development. So like when they're really tired and they need to, they need a place to vent that's not their spouse who's going to tell them to quit and they can't vent to the boss. So like, right, so they need all of those really healthy, productive outlets to make sure that they can go the distance. And we have all that built in. As we start winding down a little bit in time here, where do I start with all this? If, if I'm looking to hire a marketer, I reach out to you at victoriaromney.com. How mm -hmm. long is this process going to take me to get through average? And I know there's no such thing, but from the moment we have our first conversation to the moment I've got somebody actually implementing in my practice, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Yeah. So you go to veronicaromney.com and you fill out our form and it's two seconds. Then I'll put you on a call with me and then we'll basically do a, an initial kind of exploratory call of what you're needing support wise, whether it's strategy first or people first. After that, let's say it's people, then the goal, um, if you were to like say yes to this experience with me matchmaking for you and also developing this really critical personnel for you, the goal is to have this seat filled within 30 to 60 days. You're fully participating. We're fully participating. Um, it tends to actually go up very quickly, like I said, because I'm swimming in marketers that are looking for new homes. And then we are developing this relationship and their results for you over the course of the next six to 12 months. So it is, we jump right in. And last, last question, uh, mm -hmm. second to last question, last, sure. the, the second to last question is cost wise, what mm -hmm. should I budget to be able to work through Rainmaker Residency? <laughs> Yeah. So let's, yeah. And I think this is, let's loop back what we were talking about earlier in the podcast too. Like what are rates of doers versus rates of leaders uh, versus rates of like executive marketers. So uh, a doer, depending on where you source your doer, whether that's domestic or international, will have very different rates, right. but you're mostly looking at hourly rates, right? These are usually individuals that are going to charge you an hourly rate or some type of like basic retainer, like, oh, I'll do your social media for 500 a month or $800 a month or whatever. Right. When you're working with leaders, their compensation is half and half. Half, you're going to pay them for their time to be with you versus anyone else because we don't want to, we don't want to share. And then the other half of their compensation is directly tied to their abilities to generate results and revenue for the organization. I am a huge advocate for marketing professionals being incentivized with a carrot. Like Agreed. your job is literally to generate revenue, leads, um, clients. And so you should be incentivized for every new customer that comes in the door through your marketing efforts that you get a cut. And so their compensation is usually half and half. Most rainmakers will average somewhere between 4k and 7k a month in some time of base. And then they'll get a percentage off performance tied to their results. Um, usually an equivalent to that and at least in potential, right? Right. Now, executives off the streets, off the shelf, um, that have any type of leadership title, you know, they're going to expect six figures and then some. Got it. And so a lot of people skip the managerial level to get to like a chief or VP level when they actually don't need it and they're going to overpay. Right. So I, and that's, that's what I hoped you avoid as well. But like, I think really where most of your orthodontists are going to figure out is either they're going to be looking at those doer rates or they're going to be looking at the rainmaker rates realistically. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Appreciate it. Did yeah. I miss anything? What else, what else can you add that, that oh, I've forgotten to ask? You know, it's funny talking to you brings me back to like my local marketing agency days where I worked with a whole bunch of local businesses. And so like there's a, there's the, the rainmaker in me that wants to geek out and talk about all the strategies that your orthodontist should do with their reviews and this and that and this, which could be like a whole other conversation. But I think, I think mostly if I could leave anything with orthodontists, like I don't want anybody to tell themselves a story that they can't be different than any other ortho. Like I'm really bullish about that. There's any an enormous amount of money at your fingertips if you just radically understand that even if you are providing a similar service to someone else, it doesn't mean there's not an opportunity for you to differentiate yourself 
with really smart marketing. Exactly. Like that is so like, think about the, if we had to use an example, the dieting industry, like orange theory and F45 and all of these, like they feel exciting and new and different, but really it's just high intensity interval training that has been around forever and ever. That Same you can thing. get on an old school DVD. Yeah. 90X. Yeah. But it, feels exciting and new yeah. because you have this Bluetooth monitor and there's orange lights and your splat points and Mark Wahlberg works out with you. It, like whatever, you know, mm-hmm. but like really it's the same, but great marketing makes it feel different and unique. Right. And part of my background was literally doing the marketing for like tens of thousands of apartment complexes that were literally across the street from each other. And we were able to make them feel different from one another. It's the same thing that's true for orthodontists. Just because you went to the same school and you render the same services as your friend across the street, it doesn't mean that marketing can't be an enormous benefit for you if you can understand fundamentals around marketing and let somebody help you with your wrapping paper. Amen. And I'll just add two things to that. Number one, it doesn't have to be adversarial. You can no. both succeed really well if you 100%. find your niche. Find your marketing message and you'll both succeed because there's more than enough business out there for everybody. 100%. Um, Everybody's teeth are crooked. <laughs> yeah, we hope. We hope. <laughs> you know, we've been putting a, a – just don't tell anybody. It's between you and me here, Veronica. But we've been putting something in the water supply recently that's trying to get crooked teeth. <laughs> so don't tell anybody. Well, it's working we t- on my kid. I can tell you that. <laughs> we tell people it's fluoride, but it's really tooth crookeder. It's, it goes in the water supply. So My we, oldest has been drinking that that in tons because his teeth are – all messed up. <laughs> yeah, tell them to lay off a little bit. Tell them to go to bottled yeah. water for just a little while. Yeah, It'll correct funny. itself. Don't worry that's about really it. Funny. But but that's the first thing I wanted to say is that there's more than enough low hanging fruit oh, for all gosh. of us. Yes. But number two, and yes. I think it's really important. You've heard numbers here, right? Four to seven thousand dollars a month um, for a doer. That's a low man on the totem pole, so to speak. That's forty eight to eighty four thousand dollars a year. Do not be afraid to invest in the right people, folks. Because if you hire that $48,000 a year or $84,000 a year doer and they're really good at what they do, your practice should see tenfold growth of that. Oh, yeah, sure. Right? Like, so, so there's this whole penny wise pound foolishness of many people, not all. There are some really great folks out there who are not afraid to throw that money in smartly, smartly. And again, using sort of what you do is a very smart way. And I can tell you, I'm so thrilled the person we've gotten. Uh, it's been amazing. And so people, just remember, find your niche, your marketing message, what makes you unique, name it, get it out there, use it for your reviews and everything. And don't be afraid to spend money smartly in the marketing world uh, rather than just say, oh, you're an agency. And there are great agencies out there. I want to make that clear. Well, I used to run one. I would agree. Yeah. just But but again, if, if you want to go to an agency that's going to do everything for you, and you can afford them, and they have a great track record, and you know people, great. But for the rest of us out there, the agency is going to maybe do your website, your SEO, some of that other stuff. But you need somebody who's going to be boots on the ground, helping to create and implement a marketing strategy. And don't be afraid to spend the money. And so veronicaromney.com. Remember that, folks. Go check it out. The worst you can do is at least have a, a conversation with her and learn more. And to be clear, we've got no financial interest whatsoever. I'm just a strong advocate for what she does. I just want to say that out loud. And so, Veronica, I want to say thank you. The, the hard part now is, like you said, you wanted to sit and talk about strategies. Like the it's rest of the weird. night now, unique selling mechanism is going to be in my I head, know. like thinking. I know. <laughs> you let know me, let me be. work with all of your people and I can help all of them differentiate. Watch me. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's, I'm a nerd. I'm still, I'm still that 15 year marketing nerd that loves it so much. And you're 100% right. There's a huge difference between working with an agency that you will be one among many clients and usually the the loudest client gets the most attention. You don't want to play that game. Be selfish. Have somebody within the walls of your organization that's not using their creativity for anyone else and then watch your business explode. Yeah. And manage it. Manage it effectively. Yeah. Of course. That's okay. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Wishing you a great day. And maybe, just maybe one day, we'll get you to a summit and we can let you speak from the stage Stop there. Stop it. Don't toy with me. Yes. <laughs> like I would love to. You no, know, this year we're on a cruise, right? <laughs> this year is a is a cruise. Next year, I haven't told anybody this yet. So you're gonna be the first person to hear this, but we actually booked something on the moon. 
Oops. All right. Now you're too much. <laughs> you're just too much. <laughs> we took over a lunar base. You okay. know, spoiler alert. Yeah, you and Elon Musk. Yeah, sure. but next year actually is Caesar's Palace. Oh, in Vegas? Yeah, next year is Caesar's, no, Caesar's Palace in Trenton. It was, it was next to Venus's. <laughs> it's a really good Italian joint called Caesar's Palace. The pasta is <laughs> incredible. Uh, <laughs> really but next year is Caesar's Palace in Vegas. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I, we already started looking at the details of it. It's going to be great. But awesome. um, who knows? Maybe we'll get you on the cruise yeah. somehow. That would be cool. Yeah. So thank you for everything. Wishing you a great day and just looking forward to learning more from you. Thanks, Dr. Glenn.